this patercept has already proven itself in the treatment of anemia associated with myelodysplastic syndromes and beta thalassemia. And in myelofibrosis, anemia is very, very common. And can be, you know, patients can benefit from treatment with lispatercept. And so we see, in particular, patients who are treated with ruxolitinib develop anemia, and that can be reversed by lispatercept, as shown in the ACE001 study. Uh, and that's why we've launched now the independence trial, looking at this in a randomized phase three trial. And uh, hopefully we'll have those results too, and, and, and perhaps a new label indication for lispatercept. But even in patients who were not JAK inhibitor exposed, or not concurrently on a JAK inhibitor, and those who were transfusion dependent and transfusion dependent, we saw responses in all categories of patients. I think going forward, you know, the benefit there would be a lot of benefit identifying either populations of patients or even a biomarker to predict response. Those things are still lacking somewhat today, but perhaps the uh, independence trial will cue us into that. And secondly, you know, what if we do combine it with JAK inhibition, which JAK inhibitor would work the best? Now, clearly, there's a lot of data with a combination of ruxolitinib and less patercept, but there is some rationale for combining JAK inhibitors that have ACR, v, ACVR1 inhibition, which treats anemia, along with less patercept, which treats anemia, to get even more anemia responses. So I think a lot more is to be done with less patercept and, and similar drugs that are, are active in ligand traps. But, you know, certainly getting another drug with an FDA label for treating myelofibrosis or the consequence of the disease would be a huge win for all of our patients.